Exploring our metaverse is kinda awesome, right? Here you can hear from folks who work on the daily to build immersive experiences like this. Get inspired for how customer experiences like these can boost your brand. Welcome Ashley Fletcher, Head of Interactive Development at ByteDapt. Asher is on a mission to combine technology and creativity to solve brands' problems. First and foremost though, Asher is a thinker and maker and he's here today to give us a lesson on what it's like to be a maker in the metaverse. Hi, my name's Ashley Fletcher, Head of Interactive Development at ByteDept. Uh, I've been developing augmented reality and metaverse experiences for the past four years. And today I'm going to cover something I'm really passionate about, which is making for the metaverse and just generally being curious in this space. Now, there's a lot of people who've been talking about the metaverse, but how many people are actually making for it? So today I want to help you get started and maybe give you some new tools you've not heard of before. Um, and I'm going to break that down by what background you have. So I'll be covering what to do for developers, designers, and then non-technical people. Um, so let's get started. So if you're an engineer or a developer, I would say the best place to start is by downloading one of the major platforms. So such as Unreal, Unity, or even Roblox. Um, now they are game development platforms, but the metaverse in its current state is essentially gaming rebranded. So any skills that you learn here might be directly applicable or at least largely transferable. Um, I would say the main things you want to be covering really are just how to work in 3D space, how to handle like in basic interactions, like basic game mechanics, how maybe like pick up a coin or when you enter a space, like a notification pops up. These things are going to be super crucial uh, and should be pretty straightforward to learn. So then if you're a designer, let's start by covering that by 2D designer, I suppose. So if you're a graphic or motion designer or illustrator, um, you might be wondering where your place is in the metaverse since it's such a 3D dominated space. Um, and the first thing I would say would be just give 3D a go. I think it's super important to try these new things. It might seem really daunting, but we've had designers um, just have a go at 3D and some of them have carried on going uh, for a long time now. And most of them have enjoyed it. They've tried it. It's just getting over that first step. Um, and I would say the best place to start is probably just download Blender. It's free, super quick to get started. And then there's the famous, they call it the donut tutorial uh, on YouTube, essentially a short course you can do in like a day. Um, it covers all the basics of 3D design. And I think that will give you a, a big overview of like what 3D is all about. Um, and it's just super easy to get started. So I definitely encourage that. I'd say if you do that and then you find that 3D isn't the thing for you, um, you can still then use your 2D skills for 3D. So the major place for that is in texturing. Um, and if you don't know what texturing is, it's essentially like the wrapper or the material that goes around your 3D models, the thing that gives it its look and feel. Um, that is a largely 2D process, funnily enough. So there are programs like Substance Designer, um, which isn't free, but there are free alternatives. I think you get at least a free trial. Um, it's essentially the same as Photoshop. You'll have like a layers-based system where you can actually either draw onto the onto the texture as a 2D map, or you can draw directly onto the 3D model if you want. And this is purely really a 2D skill. Um, we've found that illustrators are really strong at this, and it makes such a massive difference to the quality of your modeling. Because um, you'll find that in a team for 3D, actually it's not made of a huge amount of generalists in some cases. So you get really specialized skill sets. And to be honest, texturing is largely a 2D skill, to be honest. And this is really where you could shine. Um, another thing you could look at is just getting into concept art or just art direction in general. I think at the beginning of a project, it's super important to nail down that look and feel, especially when you're building a big world. Um, so these are other areas that you can be maybe not directly involved, uh, with the making of the metaverse, but you can in, like inform that overall design and, and shape its direction. Okay. So the next would be 3d, and this is probably where you're most comfortable. If you're a 3d designer, you probably kind of get what most of it is about, 
but I would largely encourage you to brush up on your skills for just make it like retopology for game ready models, rigging and animation, um, all these avatars and things that are going to be needed. You're going to have to be able to animate these things and be familiar at least with rigs. Um, I would say the best place to start really is to probably download Unreal. I think for a 3D designer right now, getting used to real-time environments, not sitting there waiting for renders, um, having things that are interactive. I think just getting used to that in general is the most important thing. And there are some courses on like Skillshare and stuff that are like unreal for virtual production and things like that. And I think they're the best places to start where you're not necessarily going to be getting into the nitty gritty of how to make a game, but you're going to be learning like the basics of environment design and how to get your assets in the space and set up lighting. Um, once you've got those things covered, I think you'll be quite well prepared to start building a world and Unreal specifically has amazing tools for like terrain sculpting and it has the the marketplace that has tons of uh, high quality assets um, where you can just drag and drop them in. So really you could just create an entire world without really modeling anything. So that's a super good place to start. Um, if you're not technical or design-based, so like you're a manager or creative or something like that, um, I would say now is the time to really dive into a tutorial and start to figure out how this thing goes together. Um, the best place to start would probably be Roblox, to be honest. Um, I know it's a, you know, a gaming platform for younger kids, but we're getting 12 year olds that can build entire games in Roblox. So it shows you the, the bar that's required, right? To get started, it's not that difficult. You could do a tutorial in a couple of hours, build a game, you know, share it with your friends. It's super worth doing, right? And I think the most important reason for doing this is to stay close to your team, um, have an understanding for how it works and be able to make better decisions for yourself rather than having to consume all this information externally. You'll be able to make like more informed decisions based on like, you know, roughly how these things go together at least. Um, and I think that's going to be really important when considering that, you know, the metaverse doesn't quite really exist yet. So the major strides are going to be done by the people who are creating things and, you know, just being curious, mashing new tech together, trying out new um, designs and mechanics and things like that. Um, like they're the people who are going to be making the strides. And to do that, you really need to have at least the minimal amount of knowledge of like how, you know, a 3D scene goes together or how a basic little game is made. And I think you can definitely do that. Um, yeah, and I think I think that's it. I think hopefully this has inspired you slightly to get started. Um, yeah, get making something today. Thanks.